Hello, it's so good to see you again. I am Barbara and together with Daniel I will start a historic sailing ship, Flying Coney. Right now the main goal is to get the ship operational again. And the most important step on our very long to-do list is to fix the engine. Flying Coney has a very reliable DAF 1160 with only 5000 running hours. We never had any problems with this engine and it barely smokes, which is very uncommon for a DAF. However, a few months back we discovered a broken coolant hose. And since all hoses are quite old, we have to exchange all of them before we can start the engine again. I know it doesn't sound like a big job, but we probably have to disassemble a few parts of the engine to replace the hoses and sourcing all 25 different sized hoses is quite a job on its own. On top of it, there hasn't been any proper maintenance for decades. So we want to give the engine an in-frame overhaul to have a reliable engine for the next 50 years. However, before we start with the fun part, we have to clean up the giant mess that is our engine room, because it really is safety relevant. It is important that you can easily check if everything is the way it's supposed to be. And with pipes and cables running everywhere, half of them not in use anymore, parts hidden underneath floorboards and a dirty bilge, it's really difficult to say if anything is leaking or broken. And it makes it easier to get access to the engine and to move around while working down there. So the job for the upcoming weeks is to get rid of everything that isn't in use anymore and to give the engine room a good rinse with the pressure washer to get rid of decades of filth. But before we start with the engine room, I want to say thank you to all of you. Last time we talked about our struggles with YouTube and to be honest, we were not sure if we should talk about it because we want to make entertaining videos and not yammer on about our lives. But we were blown away by your response. We received many encouraging comments and it really cheered us up to see how much you enjoy what we are doing. Many of you shared the video and that really helped. We got a lot of first time viewers and new followers who join us on this journey. And we even got a shootout by Ship Happens, which really means a lot for us. And of course, a massive thanks to the whole lot of you who joined us on Patreon last week. It really helps to keep the project and the videos going. We are finally back at the boat and the first step or the first goal for this new boat building season is to get the boat finally moving again and the first step to get that achieved is to um, start to clean up the engine room and declutter it because there is a lot of unused and unnecessary stuff down there. So follow me down into the dark. <laughs> Since this is the only entrance into the engine room, this place here ended up as a storage room for old, damaged or equipment that is no longer in use. So the first step to get a better overview of what needs to be done is to remove everything we do not need anymore, like old piping, uh, sharp edges, storage units and so on and so on and so on. So I think it's best to start with this safety guard around the engine. In theory uh, this part is necessary for the CVO so we have to renew it. But for now I think it's better to have better access to the engine. That maintenance is a little bit easier so let's remove it. The first step was pretty easy since this whole safety guard was constructed more like a quick draft of a safety guard and not like an actual safety guard. So it will be pretty easy to do something that is more substantial and more beautiful than what was in place here. I don't think this U-shaped iron things are suitable for this job because there are all these sharp edges 
but now it's gone. We have much, much better access to the engine, which will, will be pretty helpful when we do maintenance tasks here, like exchanging the belts here, exchanging the hoses and all that. We worked on something like the gearbox or the stuffing box or so and needed something to put stuff so they welded that on quickly, roughly, crudely. A little bit of tension. When we bought Flying Coney, the one thing that really was important for us was that the ship stays operational throughout the whole refit, that we can live aboard and travel. We call it a floating refit, because as soon as you park your boat somewhere and stop using it, only have the hard work but no fun, it's a good way for never finishing the refit. So it's use it or lose it. However, during the last two years Flying Coney got more and more project that isn't operational anymore. So we feel kind of trapped here in Lelystad. To be honest, since the day we bought Flying Coney, we wanted to start traveling. And each time we thought we were ready to go, we discovered a new problem that held us back. And even though that's kind of normal for a project like ours, it is a bit frustrating. So keep in mind when we complain about the weather, the wind, the rain and the jetty that makes it difficult to bring stuff aboard, it's partly because we feel trapped in and have no other option. Having said that, we are really lucky that Flying Coney is moored in a safe harbor and that we are stranded in the Netherlands the country for historic steel ships. It could be way worse. However, we finally want to move on and therefore it's really important to get Flying Coney fully operational again. Since we have removed the safety guard, the crudely welded safety guard around the engine and also the storage construction here in this corner, there's already so much more space in the engine room and it's so much nicer. The next step is to remove the old pipe work and the old deck wash pump here because it's no longer in use. It's needed to have it out to get the old heater out of the engine room, which is obviously not working. So the plan for the day is to remove this old deck wash pump and the old piping here. But the problem with old piping are the flange gaskets because they are potentially made out of hazardous materials like asbestos. So instead of unscrewing it where the gasket may break and contaminate the whole area here, the best thing is to cut the pipes and take it out all together and then it should be fine. In this box here is a tool that might come as a big surprise for some long-term viewers of the channel. Let's open it. A uh, reciprocating saw. So now there are two explanations why we haven't used this tool so far. The first one is it was laying in some corner in a cellar and we haven't found it. 
And the other one is that the multi-tool, aka the crowbar and the hammer, are just superior tools in front of this one. But now I think we do have a perfect use case for this nice saw, and that is the old plumbing in the engine room. So let's get some work done. The engine room is already looking a lot better. There's clearly a lot more space now to move around, but it's also revealing a lot of things that need to be done. It was the first time for me since a very, very long time to work with a saw saw, reciprocating saw, which was interesting. Well, it's clearly less dangerous and less noisy than working with the energy grinder and there's not so much dust flying around. So that's, that's nice. As always, when working with a new tool, then there is a, a learning curve. So I'm sure next time I will use this, this tool, I will be a little bit better and will handle it a little bit better. I think I was on the slow side of the cutting speed. So next time I can step up the cutting speed a bit more. But the great thing about that, it's a tool where you don't get easily hurt when using it in opposite to the angle grinder, where it's very, very easy to get hurt. So yeah, the right tool for the right task was nice to work with it. We will continue by removing equipment that is not working anymore, like for example, this, this heating unit here, which will be a challenge because this is 130 kilograms heavy and it's almost as big as the entrance to the engine room to, so to get it out will be a challenge, but also, Quite a lot of fun. Can't wait to have it out there because it's ugly and it's using up a lot of space. So out, 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 out. Having things out, it's great. We also removed the big heavy industrial pump from the engine room. And unfortunately, this very old pump wasn't working anymore. But it would be absolutely great to save this piece of equipment that is still from a fishing days and which is a very strong pump for deck wash, for fire extinguishing, for washing nets as a bilge pump. And you can't have enough pumps on a boat like ours. So if anyone out there, if you do want to help us and if you have the skills and the knowledge and the equipment to give this pump a service, it would be absolutely great. Just get in contact with us. Here's the email address. Just write us a mail if you can do it and if you do want to do it. Overall, it feels really, really good to be back working on the boat um, and to, to get things done. And I can't wait to continue working and improve this boat step by step. It feels so good to be back on Flying Coney, working on the boat and getting things done. And I have good news for all the engine fans around. We will spend the next weeks in the engine room, cleaning everything up and finally starts to overhaul the main engine and the generator. So stay tuned for more engine related content. And if you don't want to miss any video of this engine room series, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so YouTube notifies you each time we publish a new video. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.